name's Alan Butterfield. I work as a uh, cinema projectionist and I'm in my mid-40s. I've been projecting for about 20 years. I'm a film buff and in a way I connect the filmmakers to the audience and I'm always watching audiences. I'm Bob Gamelin. I'm a projectionist and should we say 50s? The thing that makes running a show interesting is being able to choose the music that goes before it, the music that comes after it, the rate at which the lights drop. The satisfaction is in producing a show that has a bit of style and class to it. My name is Howard Spry and I've been in the cinema projection business for most of my life. Starting as a child, I would have been 12 years of age, when my parents built a cinema my father finally allowed me to uh, join him in the projection booth. My name's Alfred Abrahams. I'm 74 years of age, 75 come this December. I've always been a film projectionist and always loved it. My mother, she loved movies and she used to take me to the movies with her. And I used to see all these people looking at that movie and laughing and I felt, gee, I'd like to do that one day. The profession, which projectionists were, they were a professional sort of person that wanted to put on a film to an audience and give them everything they could to give them that creation. As a cinema proprietor, manager, projectionist for many years, I've told my staff, there's only one reason for us being here, and that's because of the audience. Ideally, the projection room is part of the filmmaking process, or at least the overall experience. It's just one continuum from start to finish, from put the film in the gate to somebody sitting there and watching it. Previously, cinemas had two projectors and they would run short spools, changing backwards and forwards, and now we have one horizontal platter device that has the entire film on it. You effectively plug it in, press go, and it goes to the end of the film. This is our computer, it runs everything at our cinemas, it runs all the sound, the sights, the curtain masking, our whole system is automated, so basically we watch and monitor the computer and that's how we run our shows. The platter system has allowed massive volume of film to be shown to lots and lots of people. It's technology that's still in evolution, it um, crashes uh, badly, it damages films, the multiplex is capable technically of producing the best sound and the best pictures in the world. But if you have one person operating nine or 10 or 12 screens, he cannot pay attention. It's no good having a lens that's worth $5,000 if nobody's got the time to focus the thing. They can bring anybody off the street. They can put them into a projection room and say, press that button at 10.30, and away we go, and you don't have to go back there again till the film finishes. And that's all you would get today. No presentation, no skill whatsoever. Now it's nothing to do with the experience of actually going to the movies and enjoying that, not just the product. They're not shows. You're going there to see a film, which is cut off completely from its context. Something's lost in that approach, some sort of other entity that should connect between filmmakers and audience, where you consider this as a, you know, an artistic work that has all those capabilities of defining who we are to ourselves, making us move. Why they came up with these automation purposes, well, I don't know. I mean, it had to come, and nobody could hide away from it. But at the same token, you couldn't be the old days of projection. They say once you're a projectionist, it's always in the blood and you can never get out of it. Today, with automation and the tremendous advance in technology, I believe the heart and soul of the craft has all but disappeared. I believe I'm amongst the last generation of the true projectionist. <laughs>